Hey guys, this is Evan from Tech Kings, and today we're going to take a look at Cooler Master's new Sidon 240M all-in-one liquid cooling system. We'll walk through installing the 240 millimeter radiator using push and pull fans, and then we'll show it up and running with the two included fans on a 4 gigahertz overclock on an i5-2500K. So, here we go. Relatively few accessories are needed to mount the Sidon 240. Uh, all we see here are uh, a few thick case fan screws uh, to mount through the radiator. Uh, a few other miscellaneous screws and bolts. Uh, these are your mounting bolts and standoff nuts. Um, and then we, we have back plates for both Intel and AMD. Um, one thing I really like about the Intel version is it has this simple plastic click selectable uh, socket selector, uh, which is really nice. It's a small detail, but it really just helps improve the overall experience. Pretty much the same thing here. Um, you simply just push down on here and then you can reselect it. And there's three definitive notches. It's really easy uh, to find just the spot that you need. Um, we'll be mounting it on an 1155 socket, so it, we want the middle one for all of these. Um, like I said, pretty simple and easy to do that now. And there's uh, relatively few steps overall, um, so we will walk through it now. The next step is fairly simple. Uh, right now we have the back plate on there with two uh, diagonal screws to hold it in place. Um, the standoff screws you see here come pre-applied with a, uh, an insulator to insulate the standoffs from the motherboard PCB. And Cooler Master, which has done this for a while, um, includes this socket, which can be turned with a screwdriver, which makes it really easy to turn these uh, nut-shaped screws down snugly uh, with just a screwdriver. So if you're in a real tight space, that can uh, be real difficult to do, uh, but be careful not to tighten these down too much. Uh, they, it can cause damage to your motherboard and these don't need to be super tight uh, because this only holds the back plate on basically. Uh, this is also a great way to do it so you can get a good standoff. You're not trying to hold the back plate while putting the cooler on and trying to turn down the screws at the same time. So this is a, a pretty easy way to do it. I also to avoid overturning these, I like to use my hands to tighten them, just real snug uh, with the outside of the socket. When your hands start to slip, it's probably tight enough. I've already gone through the next two steps. I've uh, already applied the thermal paste here. Uh, the method that's worked pretty well for me uh, through doing this, you know, probably several hundred times is to apply an X with a, a little bit of an extra dot in the middle. Uh, it tends to give a really good, smooth, even coat if I press the base down, give it a little bit of a wiggle, and then apply full pressure. Uh, the other step that I've already done here is apply the base, or the, the mounting brackets to the base. Uh, so as you can see, these slide into this nice notch, which prevents you from putting them accidentally on the top or the bottom. Uh, it aligns really nicely and then you just attach with four screws. It's pretty simple. Uh, so the only remaining step to mount the actual base is to line them up, attach the screws, uh, which are spring tensioned and uh, also in compression. So as you tighten it down, the pressure you're getting is actually uh, from the spring, so that kind of limits the ability to over tighten and potentially damage your motherboard or the, the cooler and the brackets themselves. So now we'll be uh, kind of just placing the radiator in its rough position while we mount this. Uh, I think something like this should work pretty well. Uh, you know, being conscious of the aesthetics, we see the, uh, the Cooler Master logo, we want it to be right side up. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just kind of try to align it here uh, as close as we can and press down and give it a little bit of a wiggle to kind of spread around the thermal paste a little bit. And then these spring tension screws tend to uh, screw down really nice and even and pretty easy. So 
So there we go. Again, you don't want to over tighten it. Just, you know, get two fingers. That's probably all the tighter you would need it. It's rock solid. You don't need to be bending your motherboard to get a good seat on these things. And that can actually warp the socket and warp the actual cooler itself, which is actually counterproductive because then you get a bit of a lift off in the, on the, uh, the middle of the cooler. So this should be good, nice and snug. So then we'll move on to actually mounting the radiator and then we'll be pretty much set. So what we'll be doing next is trying to actually mount the fans and the radiator to the case. Uh, so we will want to take our fans and make sure that the fans are pointing outward. Uh, we'd like to route the cables so that they both meet in the middle and then we can uh, push them out to the back of the case through this hole uh, in the motherboard back plate. Uh, so the hoses will fight you a little bit and what we're going to want to do is uh, gently slide the case fan there, uh, get a rough alignment, hold them both with this hand. Uh, line them up with the 120 millimeter holes. Uh, the case is giving us uh, plenty of clearance uh, with the heat sinks. And the only thing that's getting a little bit in the way is maybe the, uh, the 8 pin uh, CPU power cable. Uh, but that's already in the socket, so at least we won't have to wrestle with that. Um, not quite lined up. There we go. All right, so now that we have it supported, you want to leave everything loose so that you can make small adjustments and things will, uh, you have a little wiggle room if things don't quite align properly right on the, the first shot. And I dropped one of the screws. All right, so everything is uh, really snug and secure. Uh, it lines up to the, uh, the top exhaust really nicely. Uh, so we'll see how close we come to these uh, memory slots here shortly, but um, got my fingers crossed that it'll work. So this is what it looks like with one fan mounted in the, uh, the push-pull configuration. Uh, we were a little worried that the fan would get in the way of the uh, memory slots, but it literally is a perfect fit. It comes right up to the heat sinks of the memory and also right up to the edge of the PCB of the memory itself. Uh, I would be very cognizant if you want to do push-pull in a trooper uh, with the, this is a, an ASUS P8Z77V Pro. Uh, that is the absolute bare minimum if you can't figure out a way, I guess, to modify the handle or mount the pull fans on the outside. All right, so now we here we have our two fan push. And the only thing that really remains is to hook up the fans and then the fan cable for the pump. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we will uh, fire it up and show you guys what it looks like. All right, now we have our Sidon 240M up and running in our system. Uh, it's been running for about a half hour. Uh, we have it overclocked to four gigahertz right now on an i5-2500K. Uh, we're using Prime 95 to load it to 100%, and our current core temperatures are 48 on core one, 53 on cores two and three, and 54 on core four. So those are great temperatures. Uh, as you can hear, we have the shotgun mic pointed right at the fans and the pump, so you can hear it's, it's really quiet. Um, we're pretty impressed with it. Even when you dial the fans up to 100%, they don't get much louder than this, and even at their current fan speed, they're keeping up uh, plenty well with the decent overclock, uh, keeping the temps in the low 50s, uh, which is plenty comfortable for a 24-7 type overclock. 
A couple other quick things to note. We can see here on the pump, there's a, a subtle blue LED that's really well diffused in the kind of smoke gray enclosure. Uh, the tubes are, you know, fairly flexible, but they, uh, they prevent you from crimping. Uh, the, the hosing does a good job of that. Uh, overall, uh, we're pretty impressed with what we have here. It's pretty easy to put together, uh, despite the parts box or the parts bag looking a little daunting when we first took it out of the box. Uh, we're pretty happy with the results we got. We're going to keep playing with it. And uh, again, this is with just the stock two fans just pushing. Uh, we'll also try some push pull in our uh, further testing. And we're glad to have you. Hopefully, this was helpful. Uh, feel free to subscribe, and we hope to see you around. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to post them below, and we'll get to them when we can.